In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Please visit them. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, CKC, family of Christ, CKC. For one, I want to especially thank and welcome His Grace, our Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Ignatius Kaigama, who has graciously chosen this parish in spite of our smallness to come and be with us today and celebrate this Sunday Mass with us. We are very happy for having him since his uh, he came into this house, this is the first visit for us and we are very great, we are greatly happy for this honor and we thank Almighty God and pray that the Almighty God who has brought him to this other says to continue to sustain him as he has come to see us, his flock, who are this side of the Abuja Adarsis. His grace, we thank you and welcome you for finding time to come and be with us today. So now we will invite him to continue being us in this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you, Father Francis, for the warm words of welcome. Father, another Francis, and Father Jude, they form part of the community here, serving you spiritually and pastorally. I am happy to pray with you this morning. I know you have come with all types of intentions in your heart. Let us offer them to God. God who is in heaven and who sees all will bless you and will grant the good intentions of your heart. So let us commit, com commence our mass by acknowledging that we are sinners. We do things wrong, wrong against God, wrong against one another. Let's be sorry and ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. He who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for he will find her sitting at his gates. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and he who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her and she graciously appears to them in their path and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For you, my soul is thirsty, O Lord my God. For you, my soul is thirsty, O Lord my God. Oh, my God. 
letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the day in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's full acclamation. his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lambs, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lambs. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, 
For you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the My dear parishioners of Christ the King Parish Kurudu, good morning to you all. I have been passing here a number of times, and each time I passed, I was told that that is Christ the King Parish Kurudu, and that the Kamalai fathers are walking here. I never entered. But today, I am here, body and soul, with you, to pray together with you. <laughs> and I am so happy to see that what started very small, by what the priests have told me, what started very small, has become big, and you are growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. I see on the wall there a very nice edifice, which will be the end result of your wonderful work of cooperation and selflessness and you are referring to it as the new face of the parish, Christ the King, Parish Kurudu, Abuja. That is how it will look like. It's beautiful, it's magnificent, and it is all because of your good work. So, all I can say is keep it up. Keep it up. And may the Lord bless you as you do so. Amen. The Church, in celebrating the Feast of All Saints on 1st November, reminds us of our call to live holy lives. Why we are here today is to remind ourselves that we need to be holy as the Lord God is holy. That is the only reason why we come, to remind ourselves. If we live holy lives in this world, we are guaranteed that we shall live with God the Father in heaven permanently as citizens, citizens of heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 tells you that you, all of us, are citizens of heaven. And the only condition for admission is to live well, to live holy, to live well in this world. After the feast of all saints, we had the Feast of All Souls, where we were reminded of the sad and inevitable reality of death, that death will come when it will come. But our hope is that we shall see God face to face. If we live well and live holy, 
we shall see God face to face. Revelation chapter 22 verse 4 says that. For our brothers who have gone before us, who are in purgatory, our sisters who are there in purgatory, the church asks us not to forget them. We must pray fervently for them so that the Lord will bring them to his heavenly company. Because of the coronavirus pandemic, the Holy See has extended the plenary indulgence for the dead throughout the month of November. Do not forget your communion with the dead. There is communion between the living and the dead. And our duty is to pray for those who have died, especially during this month of November. Three things come to mind in the readings today. The first is the need to acquire wisdom. In the first reading, wisdom is depicted as a woman. It is only the wise person who goes in search of her so that that person is equipped to face the struggles and challenges of life. Remember the story of King Solomon? He was a great king. He was praying to God, not for wealth, not for influence. When God asked him to ask what he wanted, he asked for the gift of wisdom. So as to enable him to serve his people by making wise choices. And that was the gift that God granted him. We read that in 1 Kings chapter 3. Wisdom here does not refer to intellectual prowess or to the crafty and dubious ways of manipulating people. Some people think when they have so many degrees, they are wise. It may not be so. You may be intellectual, but you may not be wise. And some people believe that when they can manipulate people, they are wise. You are not wise. Some people believe in fraudulently exploiting socioeconomic systems and institutions. They maneuver their way, they navigate their way through the systems in order to cheat and think they are wise. You are not wise. The wisdom we are talking about is the wisdom to walk towards better standards of living and values that bring people together in love, friendship, and harmony. The wisdom we are talking about here is the wisdom that knows God as the foundation of everything. And you can't do anything without God. You must be guided by the fear of God in everything you do. The parable of Jesus concerning the ten virgins presents the virgins in two categories. The first group of wise virgins foresaw that the waiting period for the bridegroom might be prolonged and so they carried with them extra oil. The second group did not think of this. And at the bridegroom's arrival, they found that their lamps were flickering and they were unable to replenish their supply of oil. Their oil had finished. The five virgins considered wise represent believers who are ready to live a life of faith and adherence to divine ordinances. Those are the five wise virgin and i'm saying we should try to acquire wisdom wisdom of god wisdom that makes you to realize that god is number one in your life and your neighbor is made in the image and likeness of god you must relate well without discrimination or creating artificial barriers that is wisdom the other 
foolish virgins represent those Christians who are unprepared. They hear the word of God, but they are not able to live out the gospel values. They hear the word of God, but they are either too lazy or too busy, and they do not live out the word of God in their life. And I told you that our duty in this life is to live well, to live happily, and to live holy life so that we can have permanent citizenship with God in heaven. That is the first message I have, that we all acquire that wisdom based on the fear of God. That wisdom that knows good and bad, that wisdom that look out for your brother or sister who is in trouble and you are ready to embrace him or her and ready to support that wisdom that allows you to do the work of god selflessly you want to build the house of god you do it selflessly you do whatever you can with your power with your strength with your resources in order to build the house of god and to pro promote the work of god that is wisdom the second point is be ready and be alert as we draw close to the end of the liturgical season and the end of the year, our readings remind us of our own mortality and the passing nature of this world. Nobody should deceive you that this world is going to be here forever. Jim Reeves sings, this world is not my home. How I wish I could sing. I would have sung, this world is not my home. And just as I seem to, my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels check on me from heaven so fondo, and I can live at home in this world anymore. Can I say King Paris for who can sing so well? I didn't know. <laughs> All right. We are challenged to carry out a reality check of how prepared we are for the four last things. You may ask what are the four last things? Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Whether you like it or not, these four last things will come. And that is why we are asked to prepare. That is why we are asked to live holy lives. These last things will come because it is not in our power again. Now you can say, I am this, I am that. You can beat your chest and say, I am strong, I am powerful, I am intelligent, I am educated, I have money, I have all this. But the last things will come, you have no power over them. That is death, judgment, heaven and hell. They are going to come. And that is why we are told, let's start now. If we prepare well and live well, we will not be afraid of these last things. So, the only way to prepare is to keep the light of faith, the light of hope and love burning brightly in our lives. Faith, hope and love. If we keep them alive in our life, then we will not be afraid of these last things. You know, some Christians become indifferent, some become dull in their Christian life, some become negligent, some become so busy that they do not give attention to the things of God. But my dear friends, let us remember the four last things. They will come whether we like it or not. So the best way, the best antidote the best medicine is to prepare, as Jesus tells us today. Some Christians have the lamp, but the oil in it is very small. Some Christians have the lamp, but the oil in it has finished, and they do not even know it. So we shouldn't be like those foolish virgins who had the lamp, but no oil inside. There should be oil in your lamp. Everybody has a lamp. God has given you a lamp. God has given you a lamp. You may say you have nepa in your house, you don't need lamp, but there is need for lamp. You have a lamp. 
The lesson to learn from the action of the wise virgins refusing to give their oil to the foolish virgins is that salvation is something we can not hand over to another person, like an inheritance. You know, when the, the foolish virgins ask the wise virgins, give us some of your oil, the, fully, the wise virgins say, no, we can't give you because it will not even be enough for us. It is a message to us that salvation is not something you can hand over to your brother or your sister. You can hand over salvation to your wife. You can transfer salvation to your husband. You can transfer salvation to your children. Everybody must work for their own salvation. It is not transferable. We have to work out our salvation according to St. Paul in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So it is not something somebody will do for you. You can have plenty inheritance, plenty money left for your children, but you cannot leave salvation for them. That is why it is good to say, train your child in the way of the Lord. Give him all the money, all the properties, all the big things of life. That ends there. But salvation, you cannot hand over. You can only train your child in order to know God and to serve God, and at the end, salvation will be his or hers. The last message I want us to think about is that we should be active in the kingdom. That kingdom is already here, but it is not yet. The kingdom of God is already started, but it is not yet here in full. Today the church wants us to reflect on how to allow the light of Christ shine in our existential situations so that the kingdom of God will already start manifesting. Through us, the kingdom of God will start manifesting. We should not be distracted by human calculations. Christ will surely come and only those who are ready and with their lamps burning will join in the festive procession to the realm of glory. Only those who are ready and Christ comes to meet them, they will join in that procession to glory. St. Paul in the second reading encourages us not to grieve, not to grieve too much about those who have died. Because of their good deeds, those who have died will be granted kind admittance in the, in the banquet that the Lord is organizing. Instead of worrying so much about those who have died, we should pray for them. We should pray for them. And we should worry rather about ourselves. We should worry about spending our time on this earth productively. Spending our time productively. That is what we should be worrying about. Those who have died and gone before us, yes, we worry, but we must, in addition to thinking about them, pray and pray. We must be true worshippers of the Father in spirit and in truth. We must avoid the type of Christianity that is superficial. Because Jesus himself says, not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. If your Christianity is superficial, it is outward, it is lip service, then you are among those who say, Lord, Lord, but you don't implement what the Lord is telling you. Jesus cautions us to prepare, since we do not know the day or the hour of his coming. We need to keep refilling our lamps with the oil of prayer, the oil of the Word of God, and the oil of the Eucharist. Especially in our contemporary world, with a severe shortage of oil. I'm not talking of petroleum. I'm not talking of diesel. I'm talking of the oil of forgiveness, the oil of kindness, patience, sympathy, friendship, and we are lacking this oil a lot. There is a severe shortage. We can go to any filling station and get petrol, but this oil 
I'm talking about are grossly lacking. Forgiveness, kindness, patience, sympathy, friendship, brotherhood, sisterhood. There is a lack of the oil of good works and even of faithful discipleship. We are lacking. And that is why I say let us be active in this kingdom that has started but it is not yet completed. A, co a kingdom that is already here but it is not yet completed. Be active in it. Don't be indifferent. Don't just be lax. Be active and do something so that you will join in that other permanent kingdom. In conclusion, I want to also address our young people. We know in recent weeks they have shown that they are so sad and disappointed more or less. They are aggrieved and dissatisfied with their socio-economic conditions. I enjoin you, the young people, not to give in to despair. Despair is the worst weapon of the devil. When you say things are hopeless and everything is bad and you despair, I tell you, the devil is going to use you. So they should keep hope alive. Keep hope alive, my dear young people. Put your trust in Jesus. Jesus who never fails. Jesus never fails. The priest can fail you, the bishop can fail you, the president can fail you, the governor, the senators, all can fail you, but Jesus never fails. Does Jesus fail? No. Jesus never fails. So, my dear young people, and indeed all of us, we should put our hope and trust in Jesus. It is better to die hoping in Jesus than to die hopeless. I also want to remind our young people that of that exhortation by St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Remember that exhortation where St. Paul says, If anyone is not willing to walk, let him not eat. So the young people, we know your predicament. We know the lack of jobs, the unemployment that is galore. But please, the, the energy that God has given you, put it to good use in some way or the other. It doesn't only have to be government jobs. Just do what you can with that energy, with that talent, with every resources that God has given you. Use them well. Use them positively. And if one day government gives you jobs, government gives you all the facilities you need, then we say thank God. But in the meantime, listen to St. Paul. Use your energy, use your intelligence, use them well, use them positively in order to develop yourself and to create an atmosphere of order and peace in the society. In conclusion, we ask our mother Mary, whom the church addresses as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. When we pray the Hail Holy Queen, that is what we say. We tell, we say of our Blessed Mother, she is our hope, our sweetness, and our life. So we are asking her to intercede for us, that we may live and die in the hope that never disappoints. In the hope that never disappoints. This is our characteristic as Christians. We never give up, we never give in to despair, we never say it is all over. As long as you have Jesus, there is hope. As long as you are breathing, there is hope. So let us hold on to Jesus and hope will never disappoint us. God bless you, Father Francis, Odigbo, and your other priests, colleagues. And God bless you, beloved parishioners of Christ, the King Korodu. May we come one day again to see the new face of the parish of Christ the King, Kurodo. Amen.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, life from life, through God from through God, the God is not made. Consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified on that point of side. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring forth with him from the dead those who have fallen asleep, believing in him. To the Lord, who is our hope and our joy, let us pray. For our parish community, that our prayers and ministries may be a sign of hope in the reign of God to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Kegaman, his auxiliary Anselm, for Father Francis, Stephen, Jude, and Garba, and for all who serve the church, that they may proclaim God's words of hope and consolation to our broken world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For President Buhari, our governors, for legislators and judges, and for all who serve in government, that the wisdom of God may guide them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and students, for scholars and researchers, for scientists and explorers, that their work may lead us all to a deeper understanding of the wonders and wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For hospital chaplains and hospice workers, and for all who care for the sick and dying, that they may be a source of hope and comfort to those in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in the peace of Christ.
that they will be welcomed into the presence of God forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, pray. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer for Nigeria in distress. Oh, God, oh, merciful God, you are, you are the God of justice, justice love, love, and peace. You rule over the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishment we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down, not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people, who confidently turn to you. Our God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our help in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us call on Mary, our mother, to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. O oh Lord, you are our hope, who will never leave us disappointed. You are our joy, who turns our morning into dancing. You are our Father, whose love knows neither limits nor condition. With humility and hope, with the conviction of faith, with the joy you inspire, we offer this prayer for all your holy people, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, our good and good of all His holy people. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons you formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ignatius, our Archbishop, and Sam, our auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs in our life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine pity, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy as to enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Prayer before Holy Communion. Let us pray for God's help. O oh God, help me to make a good communion. Mary, my dearest mother, pray to Jesus for me. My dear Mary and Angel, lead me to the altar of God. Amen. Bye. 
let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Kesi, family of Christ, today we have a national collection. It is Siwa, Catholic Institute of West Africa. It remains the leading theological facility in West Africa. It was established in 1981. It is within us, this is our country. We invite you please to support the collection for Siwa. Family of Christ, we as we thank His grace for His gracious access and coming to celebrate with us. At this time, we invite the Vice VPC Chairman to Mrs. Bandy to come up for the welcome address for His grace. Good morning, Your Grace, uh, parish priests, all the priests present, and my fellow parishioners. Your Grace, it is a thing of great joy that you selected us as a parish to celebrate this Sunday's Mass with you and to receive your fatherly blessing on this day. This is your maiden visit to our parish and we deeply appreciate this 
I feel highly honored to be so chosen, even in the midst of the problems presently in our country. Our parish is made up of about 3,000 faithfuls, comprising men, women, and children. These groups are made up of retired ministry personnel, middle and low cadre civil servants, artisans, indigenous, rural, poor farmers, petty traders, and many unemployed youths, and so on. Our church became a parish about 11 years ago and has been able to weld into a united Catholic family, especially through the diligent pastoral guidance of our Carmelite priests. The statutory bodies, CMO, CWO, CYON, are all present and vibrant. The pious societies, such as Confraternity of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Infant Jesus Confraternity, Zumunta Mata, St. Jude, Mother of Perpetual Help, the Legion of Mary, the Body of Choristas, the Altar Servers, Sacred Heart Society, St. Vincent de Paul, Ministers of Hospitality, Catholic Charismatic Renewals, and many state associations are equally all here and make our parish spiritually engaging and vibrant. A commentary of Knights of St. John's International was recently inaugurated in the parish. Over the last 11 years, the infrastructure has grown in leaps and bounds. We have the construction of the main church, which is still ongoing, as can be seen. The Reverend Father's House, Our Lady of Montcarmel Grotto, three functional parish halls, the bell tower, the marks that, that mark the 10th anniversary creation of the parish. As the parish expands, so does our needs and challenges. There is no gain saying the fact that our parish will need some financial support to complete the ongoing church, the ongoing church building, and also to acquire more land for future expansion. This land acquisition, if achieved, will facilitate the construction of health clinics to meet the health needs of parishioners, nursery and primary school which in time metamorphosed into a secondary school, vocational training center for our unemployed youth, car park for safety of cars, parked during masses and other activities, our children recreation space, especially during celebrations and ceremonies. Your grace, funding and its scarcity, remain our greatest challenge. Majority of our parishioners are retired military personnel, pensioners, medium and low income civil servants, artisans, indigenous rural population, farmers, young unemployed graduates, petty traders, and so on. The COVID-19 pandemic has, has great effect on their economy and that in turn affects, affects the parish. Your grace, we don't want to bore you with very long speeches. However, to say we are very happy to have you here with us today is an understatement. We are overjoyed. We pray that the good Lord will make your ministry a very successful one and that from time to time, you will make our time to visit your flock here in Christ the King Church, Kurudu, Abuja. We love you, your grace. Thank you.
Okay. Father Francis the First, Father Francis the Second, Father Jude, Father Susan, and then my three priests, secretaries, Father Emeka, Father Abu, and Father Tiopenda, they are all here. And you can see together with the altar servers, we are, we, are the, we are the team on the altar. We have served you. We cooked for you the spiritual food and you have eaten. Are you satisfied? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Oh, we are good cooks. <laughs> the Lord Jesus has given us the power to cook the spiritual food for you and give, free of charge. So I'm happy that we have done our work and you have received. Thank you for the great welcome. Thank you for showing me that you are determined. You are determined. From a very little church, you are determined to grow higher and higher. The speech by the TPC Vice Chair, uh, Mrs. Monica Hadiza Vandi, is a very good one. It summarizes all that you have been uh, doing and what you are attempting to do. In the Catholic Church, you never say you have completed work. Work is always ongoing. Just like your church now, your hall and whatever, it's ongoing. Father Francis will do his tenure here and go. I will do my tenure as Archbishop and go and work is still ongoing. So your children will come and work is still ongoing. So never say it is all ended. It is just ongoing. And all we say is, Give your best. Do your best. All those things you have enumerated here are things that you should put before you to achieve. If you believe that the bishop will do it, you are not being realistic because the bishop depends on you. All of you here, the cathedral we are building is from you that we collected the money. Anything we are doing, running of the office of the bishop, training of priests, building of, of schools or anything is from you. So no matter how you may be, you are still precious in the sight of God. Whether you are high level or low level, artisan or trader or vegetable, vegetable seller or whatever you are, remember that little thing God has given you is precious. So continue to do your best. And um, we have many parishes like these all struggling to survive. But please, that unity we have is what makes us strong. And that is what makes us to be going forward. When people see this development, they say the Catholic Church is very rich. We are not very rich as such in terms of money in the pocket or in the bank. We are rich because we are together. We are rich because united we are. From all the different ethnic groups, I, you have mentioned here, look at the Zumuntamata in their beautiful dress, look at the choir, look at all the others, you know. It's uh, wonderful that we are united from different places, north, east, west, south, all of us are here. So keep it up. And the Kamalites, they are religious congregation, we are diocesan um, priests, but we are working together. And that is the harmony we enjoy in the Catholic Church. So I say, keep it up. Did you say one of your catches got an award here? Yeah? One of your catches? Who, um, oh, he got his Knight of what? Knight of St. Sylvester. Come out now, let us see you clearly so that we appreciate you. <laughs> You see, I'm so happy to know that a Kati serving the church so well has been recognized by the Pope. And that is how God is going to recognize him. <laughs> and I can say it is not only the Kati, it is all of you individually. God knows you by name and he is going to recognize you by name. Yeah. So, I'm quite happy that um, I've come to Kurudu. Now it is no longer a name. I know who the people are. I know the parish well. 
I know the PPC second life chair. I know all the people that I have met, and it's wonderful. So you are a happy people, and keep it up, please. Keep it up. There's Muntamata, thank you for your song and your very wonderful, thoughtful song. I, when they sang that, um, what is it now? That song you sang is about um, Hikima, Hikima, Ba, Me, Na, Allah, or something. The song you sang, it summarized the whole homily that I was trying to give. These women are very gifted, they are very talented. Imagine I spend 20 minutes giving my homily. They spend one minute summarizing my homily in their own... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I know all the other groups are trying. CWO, uh, MOD, CYON, all of you, CMO. Do you have CMO here? Yes. Where are they? You are there, okay. All right, I want you to be visible also. And uh, I know you are doing a lot, and you can do more. I also want to know uh, if the Catholic television is here taking everything. The, the manager, my MD is here, and he's taking uh, uh, everything you are doing. Is your party? Ah, yeah, this is your party? Oh, then, then you should uh, do more for them here. So that the people in Guagualada, in Buari will know what you are doing here. And I hope that every family here has a Catholic television decoder. Do you have? Those who have, let me see their hands up. Oh, oh, oh very few. Please, please, try and get a decoder. Get to the parish priest, and the, the MD is here in your parish. You should be the ones having more decoders than any parish. So please try and give that so that what we do will reach out. Let it not just be what you do here in Kurudu. The people in, um, in Buari, in Gwagwalada, in Gaube, all, they should know what you are doing. And that is the essence of being a family. So once again, congratulations to you, the choir, Dr. Jude and your choir. You have been wonderful, angelic as usual. And everyone behind the cameras, all of you doing wonderful work. May God bless you, and I hope to come back here. When I come, I will see new things again. I know you are capable. I know you can do it. So go and do it in the name of the Lord. You now stand and receive your blessing. And when you go home, you distribute the blessing. You bow your head and pray. May the God of all consolation order your days in his feet and grant you the gift of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your heart in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Group of the masses ended. Thanks be to God.